Welcome to Eagles Draft Central. We're going to take a look at the build up towards the draft, starting with the combine here that's going to be opening up tomorrow, the interviews and such with the coaches and then the players, and leading up to the draft. But obviously, we're in there before right now. What's up? It's your boy Centron coming back at you with another analysis video. And I kid you not, that's my real name. And uh, the first article we're going to look at today 2024 NFL Draft 10 prospects who could rise during the pre draft process. And we have Bookie, Bro Bookie Brooks. Bucky Brooks, <laughs> the analyst who uh, handles that at NFL.com. So let's look at the guys he has tabbed. McCarthy, we're not even going to cover that because the Eagles aren't in the market for a quarterback. I will just say he's second tier behind the top guys. Running back. Um, this is a guy that uh, I just became aware of, but he's uh, highly touted. Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. Explosive guy, 5'11", 210. Probably he's going to run in the sub 4 fours, man. Um... He has a thousand yard season under his belt. Minimal workload with only 368 carries, but he's explosive. Um, I'd love to see what he brings to the receiving game. Um, and he wasn't able to play a senior bowl. That's why I didn't uh, probably get to get a good look at him. But the guy, shifty, electric, uh, big play potential. A guy, you know, who's not too far off from the dimensions of a DeAndre Swift. So maybe someone we could look at. Them he tagged as a cha change of pace back, but man, he could bring a lot to the, the Eagles' backfield and probably could be had in the middle rounds. Wide receiver uh, Troy Franklin, explosive, six foot three, buck 80, probably gonna run in the four, you know, the uh, low four fours, high four threes, but um, he brings that speed element, but I'm not really looking at him too much. But uh, you know, I'm just, you know, potential is not something I just want, you know, to have on your docket, you know, three, four years down the road. I want you to be able to, be able to actually reach it. And, uh, you know, he looks like a one-trick pony for the most part. Tight end, Dallin Halker. We've talked about him before. Um, dang, 700 plus yards. You know, creepy. Pause. I made a mistake. Um, he creeps up on you with his talent, and he's able to be that H-back, flex tight end, six foot three, 241. You know, not a typical inline blocker, but, you know, more of a chess piece that you move around in the formation. I'm not so sure we would go with him. We just re-signed um, Albert O to our offense, but he's in, of a similar mold. If we're going to go with somebody, it's going to be someone like Penn State's um, tight end. Theo Johnson, who can be um, that dual threat behind uh, Dallas Goddard. And we need to eventually draft a number two that's worthy of taking that mantle when he eventually gets out of here in a couple of years. Offensive line, Tyler Guyton, man. I would love this guy. Um, six foot seven, 328. Just a athletic freak at his size. Um, we'd love him for him to come in and, and follow the footsteps of his mentor in uh, Lane Johnson. They've had some talks. Oklahoma, fellow Oklahoma guys, and he's been able to uh, mentor him on the mental health stuff and, and dealing with those type of things. Yeah, blue chip talent, but, you know, stash him and let him, you know, um, just marinate. And when he's ready to take over for Lane in a couple of years, let him go. And you've hopefully got a 10-year starter for the next, you know, decade or so. All right, defense. Chop Robinson, you know, we've heard about him. You know, the production doesn't match, you know, the athleticism. Only 10 and a half sacks. But, you know, I would most likely be better at the next level than he was um, there at Penn State. But, you know, um, I don't know. I don't want to be in the market for a first-round guy. And I think it's where he's going. But, yeah, I definitely think with the the... 40 that he's going to run, he's going to open some eyes and hopefully boost himself up there, you know, for him. But you know, I said that, I'm like, wait, I don't want him to jack, uh, drop the second round, potentially think about drafting him, but I think he'll be going in the first. As will Darius Robinson, I think. I think he sneaks into the, the bottom of the first round. Talented guy, man. Uh, six foot five, two eighty six. I think the comparison for him was like Cam Jordan. Just, you know, lovely comparison. He's a 15-year pro down there in uh, Louisiana. Uh, with the Saints, and, you know, he just does everything in uh, physical stature. You know, he's like six foot six himself, two at 290 range. But he's probably got the potential to get stronger, uh, get better. And he's uh, already got some moves at the push-pull that he uh, loves to uh, do. in a rugged bull rush would be actually a good replacement for them to draft. But I think he's also going to, you know, probably um, be out of our market. So... And I'd love to, if he was there to set in the second, I'd love to draft a guy of his caliber. He could play all along the line. Uh, beautiful, 
talent to mesh with Vic Fangio's scheme, but he most likely won't be there. So, all right, linebacker. This is one of the guys that I'm in love with um, at that position. Peyton Wilson, man, the NC State uh, senior, 24 years old, a little bit older, but um, has you know a pair of 100 tackle seasons on his resume, blocked 15 sacks, seven interceptions. So he's a do it all player. Can't you know? Uh, not only can he drop into coverage, but you know he has uh, awareness. And he can be in the mold of a guy like, I always say this, but, you know, he's my guy, Patrick Queen, um, or Roquan Smith. Those guys, are, the Ravens were blessed this past season to have those two guys. And they, got, they drafted a guy in, I think, the third round. Got a Clemson maybe to take over for um, Queen departing. So they already had that set up, you know, that um, system in place where they're going to replace a guy that they're not, they're not gonna, you know, planning on keeping because they paid $100 million plus for Roquan and they didn't really want to shell out that money, which is understandable. Um, but yeah, this guy here, man, I think he's going to be an impact player. As long as he can stay healthy, be fine. If we can get him with one of our two picks at, you know, on, on day two, I would be happy in the, in the second round. Cornerback Queen Don Mitchell, man, this guy is just a rising star. I think he's going to be the guy to go beyond, um, Taron, Taron Arnold at uh, Alabama. He's going to sneak up the boards, going to run 4-3, um, going to be fluid, in his in his uh his drills he's just gonna wow and impress and probably on the uh film board as well so i don't expect him to be there when the eagles draft, draft 22 and, and i don't expect him to draft a corner they haven't done so since Lito shepherd in 2002 so uh it'll be rare a rarity but i i just have a feeling how he's gonna try and aim for the tier two guys um i do not want to see a record straw or whatever his name is you know uh riffraff um Rap, 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 you know, anyways, but um, I would love to have this guy in Philly, but I just think he's going to price himself out of our potential market. Safety, Callan Bullock. I promised to go watch the table him. I didn't. So you're not even watching until it's all good, but um, I just believe he's more of a in between the hashes type of guy. And he's not going to be able to play the deep third. And I mean, as long as you can find a role for him and he sets the tone on defense, that's fine. But I prefer more of a versatile guy, a guy who can um, be single high. And then with these defenses, you want, I mean, in the more modern NFL, you want both your safeties, safeties to um, ideally have that interchangeability where they can both play high or low. Um, but, you know, maybe he's not a limited player. I don't know. So I'd have to see. All right. Let's get next to six guys, um, or I should say, Six NFL draft storylines that will shape the first round. So um, this is tied into our previous article where how is it going to play out and why would it, is it going to play out that way? So the quarterbacks are really going to affect this draft. This guy, Caleb Williams, most likely is going to go overall, um, number one overall. So um, that leads to, you know, the other guys, if they're, you know, quarterback needy teams, and there are a few, you know, the, the commanders uh, could, could select Drake, uh, Drake May, and then there's Jaden Daniels. So there's that top, top tier with Drake May and Caleb. Um, Caleb probably, you know, being seen as a one. And even between one and two, there's a gap there, perceivably. But, even, you know, even between these three, there's huge gaps in between. And Jaden Daniels, um, where, where does J.J. McCarthy fit in that? And then, you know, teams are going to run because they pick second and third, these two teams do. And... Um, other guys, you know, this could be a pick that maybe the Broncos, you know, to want to exercise or another team that um, isn't, you know, maybe might be a surprise team. They're not looking for a quarter. You know, they have a quarterback established, but just in a couple of years down the road, they're going to need someone. So you never know. Um, but that dearth of talent there at that position is definitely going to have people, you know, like uh, seeking to move up. And then that affects other guys falling down and, Hopefully for us, we do not need in the market for a quarterback that would uh, help us to be able to get some, someone otherwise maybe wouldn't have been able to. So it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Oh, yeah, because here's other teams, the Giants, the Falcons, the Vikings, you know, like I said, the Broncos, the Raiders, and the Steelers. How is their lack in their need going to supersede, um, well, I guess, their 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 your capital because they're gonna have to waste some capital to move up or to acquire the you know those guys or sit back and for them potentially risk losing out on um you know a guy that could be their fixture for the foreseeable future all right will a running back step up hopefully for me not i just i want it to be as muddled as possible 
um, so that you know there's not a highlight uh, guy out there, and then they're trying to get him, and then you know that leads to for us on the opposite end a lack because we need you know at least we're gonna draft at least one running back because we the cupboard is bare. We have DeAndre Swift, who's a free agent, and then Boston Scott. Also, those you know those guys can be filling. Some of them might come back here to Philly, but we um, need a lead guy and a guy for the future because Gainwell, he is the one guy under contract, but even his contract is up after this season. So there'll be no one there. So we, we have to draft someone and bring someone in. And we might, you know, free agency one guy and draft one guy. That probably will be the perfect meld for us. But we'll have to see. Um, the free agent market, you know, it has some stars, but the way the running back market has been trending as far as pay goes, they could, they could really struggle because... Um, they're always looking for younger, you know, better, fresher legs to come into the league. And, like, there's Trey Benson, Blake Corum, Jonathan Brooks, Bucky Irvin. Those guys are all, like, similar to me. They're in the same bracket. There's no one that's really standing out. And, sure, somebody might have a highlight week, but there's really no um, Hall of Fame worthy uh, B. John Robinson there this, in this draft this year. So, hopefully that helps us, us out with the market being muddled. We can pick and choose. And, hopefully, in the third round, we can get one of these guys or maybe even beyond the top of the fourth round. I would love to get um, actually Braylon Allen, Allen out of uh, Wisconsin, but I know we'd never go for that guy, which is, which sucks. But all right, what pass rushers shine? Um, you know, Trayvon Walker. <laughs> I mean, kind of. I can't say he set the market back, but he wasn't or he hasn't lived up to the draft billing. He's the number two overall pick by the Jacksonville Jaguar, Jaguars, and he hasn't shown much. Whereas Aiden Hutchinson has balled out in Detroit, man, and. Um, Let's see. We have like it's it's more even it's similar to the running back position, but it's a better uh, crop at the top. But I think there's just better valuation throughout you know duration of the draft with the running backs, and then you can find guys in the middle rounds, you know, or the end of the draft like uh, Rutgers um, Isaiah Pacheco, who's a star. If he can just you know still have better uh, health and keep continuing uh, to grow and mature. But let's see, Dallas Turner. Jared Verse, who I like from, you know, my alma mater. Laya Tu, Leitu, Chris Brezzo, Braylon Trice, Jonah Ellis. Those guys are all in kind of, you know, the same bracket, but um, we might be able to get one of these guys later, but I have to look at some of them. But um, there, there might be, you know, there's, the depth isn't as good as it was in, the, in, in, in it has been in previous years, but um there might be some some guys to be had later. I mean, because just we need cornerback, we need running back, we need backup tight end, we need a receiver three. I don't know where those it, after free agency we'll see where those uh, needs fall on the on the on the um, in order one two three. But there'll be some options for us, so we'll have to see how things fall out. But um, it'll be interesting. Who's wide receiver number two? So I'm not concerned with wide receiver number two. I'm concerned with the tiers. So this is the top tier. Marvin Harrison, he's number one, clearly. But then behind him, Malik Neighbors and Rome Odunse is like, you know, 1.5. But we're not going to be able to get any of those guys. So we're going for more like the, the true second tier and the third tier guys. Uh, guys that can be available in the second round and third round. So um, there's a guy we're going to get to later, man. He He's a... Uh, He's quite an interesting um, pickup, but he's going to be had in that, that day two to day three range. Um, I believe day two. I don't think he gets past um, the third round. But um, the lad McConkey, you know, guy second or third, uh, most likely second, I believe. And, um, you know, just uh, the, the Brian Thomases be more in play for those guys, but I, like I said, I want to see, you know, if their run goes on those guys. So I think Marvin Harrison, he might go top five. The Cardinals can pick him up easily. Um, or, you know, it's any of the other teams, depending on how they feel about their quarterbacks. Uh, we saw Vegas, we saw the Giants picking at number six. It'll be interesting, but like I said, that tier two to three for me is going to be where we find our value because um, I want rare talent. And the guy we're going to talk about later, he has that. Who can continue their uh, pre-draft rise? Like I said, Quinion's gonna be—he's gonna be going sh straight up. Um, Roman Wilson. We'll talk about him a little bit later. Ricky Purcell. I don't know. I think probably you know, he's not a burner. Probably a possession receiver, most likely. But uh, probably his catch radius and just his ability to—you uh, know—probably route run routes. But I haven't looked at him all because 
He's for me the typical. Uh, but yeah, Tyler uh, Lockett comparison for Roman Wilson. I love that. All right, let's look at our running back situation here. Let's uh, do this real quick. Excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and type in the Eagles. I'm tired of having to find these guys on my own. All right. So, like I said, we have these guys under contract. We just added someone on a futures contract. Ken Kingwell. And then uh, we have Tyrion Davis-Price, who's a cast off from the 49ers. And then what, what do we do here? So I would say for me, ideally, it would be to um, bring him back and then draft a guy. So if we, my, my ideal combination would be to bring stuff back on a minimal contract and then draft Br Braylon Allen, which I know will never happen. Hey, American dream, right? Um, and then have, continue to have Gainwell as that third and then maybe just continue on uh, with Boston Scott extend him another year. He's been here for how many years consecutive run, consecutively running? So um, a shame we didn't use him, but we didn't trust him. And uh, I don't think he holds up in pass, block, pass pro, so which is sad. But let's just say we, we let him go. This will be my dream, another dream scenario. Okay, this will never happen, but in bringing the A.J. Dillon in free agency, he will be um, a cheap. And then drafting Braylon Allen or another running back, because there's, like, there's several that I accept. He's just my dream guy that I have, because he has a size, speed, um, doesn't have the receiving chops, but, you know, you can pair him with a guy like DeAndre Swift, ideally. But, you know, there's so many different ways you can slice it, and it's going to be a cheap position anyway. I think in between all these guys, we're they were under 5K this past season, which is crazy. Um, and some guys spend that on, or some teams spend that on just one guy. All right, let's see. What are we up here with? Uh, let's see. All right, let's get into um, the guys we were talking about earlier. So prospects with the most to gain at the, at the scouting combine. And yeah, he has it, but uh, we're not going to talk about him. Or no, we're not. Michael Penix, I've heard... Things that he, you know, he could go undrafted, he can go as high as, you know, second round, potentially, you know, wide swing on him. But, you know, he's, this guy's talented, but he's had ACL surgeries. And so we're going to do a, a, a good eval on his uh, his knees and, and his, his shoulders, the AC joints. Yeah, man, uh, they're going to poke and prod you under that stadium and see uh, if you're going to turn into a Titan or not. <laughs> Shout out to the best anime ever, Attack on Titan. All right, JJ McCarthy, don't care. Like I said, we're, we're not in the market. Um... But he's a second-tier guy. His size will be a, you know, a point of contention, but we'll see how that shakes out. Braylon Allen, man. Agent Zero. We have a different Agent Zero. This guy is bigger, stronger, faster, potentially, which is crazy. Back-to-back, um, -back, 1,200 yards. Had you know 900 uh, or so yards. 984, I believe. And I think 11 or so touchdowns. But he was only... He's still, I think, night or 20 he's 20 i think he's gonna he's gonna, he's gonna turn 21 before the season starts so which is crazy six foot two 240 build the guy apparently uh, apparently runs a 4-4 um or maybe under i mean that would that would be insane but um a 1.49 split within the first 10 seconds which is just highly explosive um he um very good get off <coughs> excuse me for running back i would love to bring him in um like i said they're competing right now they're jockeying for that number one position and, you know, he just has everything. Um, despite his size, he's able to, you know, run, you know, with finesse and use a stiff arm. Project as a second round pick, I don't, I, I think he'll, he, I think he, he could go definitely in the second, but I'm just hoping that we can get him at the top of the third. That would be beautiful. All right, Roman Wilson, man. I love this guy here. Runs in the four, three, four threes. He's five foot 10, a buck 86. So, you know, slight of frame, but, you know, he's tough. And he just, he has a suddenness about him. The guy, the way he runs routes, um, it's just so subtle the way he, you know, he breaks him off or, he, you know, he just, um, he, he, he curves in. It's, it's natural. So it's a natural route running ability and um, can be just a weapon. Him working underneath, um, in the slot, out of the slot. And he could, he could also, you know, take the top off the defense, you know, run outside as well. So run away from you guys, um, those guys on the outside. But, man. The speed, you know, linebackers and, and underneath guys are going to have a, a, a problem covering this guy. And think about him in, in Kellen Moore's offense, him um, crossing the field, making use of that speed, running away from defenders. 
be the perfect compliment to AJ Brown and, and uh, Devonta Smith. So I was like, I was hesitant because of his size, but you know, man, that explosiveness, like I said, rare talent. The Colts have the you know perfect mantra for me. They're searching out for those guys. They, they had like the top five prospects, you know, size, speed, weight ratio. And I was envious. You know, I'm, I'm mad. We still didn't mad. We you know we didn't get the D tackle um, who ran a four four, which is just crazy. So um, last year, but anyways. All right, Kingsley Suamataya. I hope I said that correctly. Out of BYU, he's a young guy, still growing into that frame, which is crazy. I think he's only 20 years old. So um, you would love to have a guy like that. You know, he's uh, still maturing, physically speaking, and um, you know, young guy. You know, but you know, solid has a frame, has all the physical tools you want in the place. But you can, you know, in our system, you'd be able to sit and learn, have the opportunity to learn from a guy who's similar in size and Jordan Mailata, and um, I know, a future all uh, future Hall of Famer in Lane Johnson. That would be the perfect situation for him to walk into. No pressure to, you know, start up front and he can uh, come in and just continue to better himself and then be uh, a part of a Southland University. Psh, would love it. Damn, he's six foot eight. Damn. Or I don't know, that, that's someone else, right? I think it's talking about him. D Tavondre Sweat, man, just... I haven't even watched his tape, but he just looks athletic. Like the build, he just, just dispersed pretty evenly for a guy, you know, that size. Six foot four, three, 362. I know he's a load, man. So, I mean, he would just, I mean, I shore up, you know, um, help shore up a, a defense right up the gut. I don't know, the, the Cowboys might be looking at him, you know, uh, to pair with Monty Smith. And yeah, he was a failure this past year, but <coughs> give him another year, be nice. But we're not even. We're not gonna be able to, get, you know, get him in the market. This is more of a futures down the road if you're open. I mean, you're available after your initial uh, first contract rookie contract runs out. Cooper uh, DeGene, this one for me was like, okay, well, you know, um, I, I thought it was no problem, but he's dealing with an injury, so he's not gonna be able to most likely participate at the combine, and uh, it's undisclosed, so we don't know what it is. If it's something that lowers his stock, he could be had later on. So you know, I'll be looking to. Uh, you know, come up on the re-up um, later, you know, get my money, get my interest. But let's say third or fourth round, he slips, pick him up secondary um, for, you know, late. I mean, yeah, I think he, he can be useful this year. You know, uh, he suffered it early on, but we don't know what it is. It could be something minor that, you know, barely dings his draft status. But if it's something bigger, look for him might maybe to slide out of that second round. I, I, I have him going top of the second round um projection tyler owens look this guy i couldn't even find film on him and then when i did he was you know over playing the uh the easy i think it was either a screen or uh the swing pass for the running back and letting him get an extra 30 40 yards when he should have been stopped there or the you know very least gang tackle so uh you know a uh, size weight speed ratio he you know clocked 23 miles per hour last year six foot two 210 Former uh, five-star recruit, but hasn't lived up to that building. Transferred out of Texas to Texas Tech. Um, is he any relation to Jonathan Owens? You know, the uh, Mr. Simone Biles, and people try to disrespect him with that. But it'll be um, interesting. Like, he could be maybe had in the later rounds. Um, a day three pick. Well, you know, he could probably up his price with the, um, you know, good measurables at the combine. But not someone who's ready right now. But interesting pick, you know, for... Uh, future development which is you know something we could definitely use but if you can play in space and we'll see you know how he does at the combine um but just uh someone who yeah creates intrigue and the last thing we'll get today just throw away but jason kelsey is still undecided on nfl retirement he's still uh working out though uh, but he's balancing you know trying to uh give an ear to some of those media deals like okay what are y'all talking i'm kind of reaching new heights you know what i'm saying <laughs> in that pay scale but I think he's out of here, but, you know, the 11th hour, you know, uh, reneging, I'd be for it. I'd be for it. I'm just saying, I think that he's, you know, uh, going to hang him up. If he doesn't, of course. Like, we close out, uh, we'll close out the podcast like we started with open arms. Anyways, you're not even watching, though, but it's all good because we love talking about the Eagles here. And we love making these videos. So we're going to chunk the deuces officially, but as always, as always. 
It's fly eagles fly and let's motherfucking go. Fly. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Cintron, Cintron Anime, Cintron Life, or Cintron Laughs, or other social media.